Today's lesson is on producing visible light. The goal of this lesson is to describe and compare how light sources produce light, specifically compare incandescent light to fluorescent light. So how is light produced? If you think back to the beginning of this unit, we looked at how the Greeks originally thought that light was produced by your eyes, that us as human beings could produce light. Um, they thought that when we opened our eyes, two beams of light came out of them, and then when we closed our eyes, the light disappeared. Today, we know that that's not true. We know that light comes from other sources. Uh, the primary source, though, of all light in the universe is from the atom. The first unit that you did uh, this year was mix and flow of matter, where you learned about particles. Well, the atom is another name for that particle. It's more specific. And next year in grade nine, you'll learn more about the atom of the atoms of different elements, as well as the parts of the atom. But just to name a few things, there are a couple parts here that are important. So we have at the center of the atom, we have what we call the nucleus. The nucleus has the positive charges called protons and neutral charges called neutrons. But then we also have on the outside these particles that are charged negatively and they are called the electrons. The electrons are what are important in producing light. With that, what happens is electrons also are what allow us to produce electricity the way we know it today, where we can turn a switch on and we end up with light and stuff like that. But what happens is the electrons get excited and they jump to a higher energy level. They gain energy. But just like us, you know, say if you eat some sugar, after a while you're going to crash. So after a while, those electrons come back down. And when they come back down, they give off the extra energy as visible light. If you're not 100% sure on this concept, it's okay. Um, next year when you learn more about the atoms, it'll make a little bit more sense. So take a moment right now, pause the video. You probably don't have anyone beside you, but see if you can name as many sources of light, of visible light, as possible. So this is where does light come from? So looking at light sources, which is an object or an organism that produces light, we can divide it into two categories. Natural sources, which are made by nature, um, have existed for a very long time, as well as artificial sources, which are made by man. In this, what we're going to do is we're going to list a couple of examples. Okay, so let's start with some natural examples. We have... Oops. The sun. We also have stars, as our sun is a star. Okay, um, we've got different organisms as well, like jellyfish and fireflies. Uh, other things include things like fire. Mm, what else could we include as natural sources? Uh, let me think about that for a minute. There are many other natural sources. Um, I'm just trying to think of a few. But moving on, we also have artificial sources, which are made by man, so things that we've made. We can include stuff like candles and lamps, light bulbs, We can include, oh, in between, we can actually include chemical reactions. Some chemical reactions are produced by nature. Others are produced by us. We have, uh, again, fire, flashlights. We have TVs and your phones and many other things as well. So see if you can add a few more examples to natural and artificial sources. 
Moving on to our different types of um, sources, we can categorize them into four main categories. The first one is light that's produced by incandescence. What this means is it means that we're using heat to produce the light. So we heat an object up to the point where it glows and produces visible light. In an incandescent light bulb, the part that's going to heat up and produce the light is called the filament. So electricity passes through, okay, electricity passes through, heats up the filament, which then produces light. Okay. Now, incandescent light bulbs are some of the oldest forms of light bulbs. They're, they take off the, of the idea of candles and burning gas lamps and things like that. Um, however, they are not very efficient. They only actually produce 5% uh, light. So if you put 100% in, 5% of it comes out as light, and 95% is wasted, most of it as heat. This fact is important when we compare incandescent light bulbs to fluorescent light bulbs. Speaking of fluorescence or fluorescent light bulbs, we are going to look at how they produce light as well now. So fluorescent light bulbs are a tube that's filled with a gas called mercury. Mercury is toxic to humans, um, so we do need to be very, very careful when dealing with fluorescent lamps, especially if they explode, or if you're trying to dispose of them, make sure you take them to a recycling center for that. Inside the tube, there's also a white powder called phosphor. So the, the tube itself is coated with this white pow powder, and then we have the gas that fills up the space inside. As electricity passes through, uh, what happens is basically the mercury atoms, okay, this is mercury, get excited and produce UV radiation, okay? That UV radiation then causes the phosphor to get excited and to glow. And when it glows, it produces light. So the key points here is that it's the electricity passing through, the mercury atoms are excited, and produce UV radiation, and that radiation vibrates the phosphor particles, causing it to glow white. In terms of how efficient fluorescent light bulbs are, they are much more efficient. They need between one-tenth and one-third of the energy of incandescent light bulbs. So basically you're going to save yourself between 70 and 90 percent using a fluorescent light bulb compared to the incandescent ones that we had before. So moving on, we now have phosphorescence. Phosphorescence is, if you think of anything that glows in the dark, that's exactly what it is. We're still using phosphor, which is the same as in fluorescence, and those particles are going to absorb the UV radiation, but in this case, in phosphorescence, they're going to store that energy. And then later on, when it's dark, or when there's no more UV radiation that is hitting it, they're going to emit the light slowly over a long period of time. So it's just a small glow, and it's going to happen for a long time. Some examples of this are, say, glow-in-the-dark t-shirts, um, the stars that you have that you can put in your room, uh, also on watches, some of the watch hands also glow in the dark, or the numbers, um, and that's all from phosphorescence. So they take the UV radiation, they store it, they keep it for later, and then slowly when it's dark, they give off that energy. Lastly, we have bioluminescence. Bioluminescence, just like the name indicates, means that it's coming from a living organism. So this is where the living organism itself will produce the light. Uh, the light is produced from a chemical reaction inside the body. This often happens in um, organisms that live in the ocean, especially organisms that live very deep, but it can happen elsewhere as well. So we've got jellyfish, we have one called the flashlight fish. We also have fireflies plankton, 
the anglerfish, and many others as well. And basically what happens is inside their body, there's chemicals that react together to produce light. As humans, we have an example of this, not from our organisms, but using chemical reactions to produce light when we use glow sticks. So now that we've done the lesson, what you need to do is you need to go through the check and reflect on page 225, um, and you need to do questions number one through four. Remember, we've now looked at four different ways of producing light. Incandescence, which is where we use heat. Fluorescence, where we use electricity and UV rays to excite the phosphor to glow. We have phosphorescence. Sorry, my writing's not very good on the tablet, but phosphorescence where UV rays are stored, or their energy is stored and then given off later. And bioluminescence, where it's living organisms that are giving off light.